Hello, you've caught me at home today. So I'm sitting here in front of my country mustard sideboard that I painted not long after I moved into this place um, and shared it online as well. So there is a video online on the website for those of you who are interested in working with country mustard and colored waxes. When I finished the sideboard, I put these frames up above it. So these frames are from our old place and I just wanted to put something quickly up on the walls just so it felt like home. And I had every intention of replacing them. I'll just move the camera up so you can actually see. I had every intention of replacing them and I was a little bit lazy. I was thinking I'll just go out and buy some because you know it was a busy, busy time of the year and we'd just moved, moved houses and everything like that. Um, but here we are a year later and they're still up there. One of the main reasons why is because I've not actually been able to find anything. So there's actually not a lot available when it comes to beautiful frames out there. It's pretty stock standard um, without paying exorbitant amounts for a beautiful frame. So I thought, you know what, I'm actually going to paint them. And this is actually going to be a great video because I know there'll be people out there like me who may have an idea of um, some framing for their homes whether it be photo frame or a frame around an artwork but you can actually customize them to suit your space very very quickly and easily so that's what this video is about um, so i'm intending to make these a little bit earthy but still kind of with a little bit of lux in it so i'm going to use some earthy tones and do um, some metallics on them um, i've got some coppery tones kind of happening around the sideboard so um, that ball there the cushion so I'm gonna um, work with bronze night and forgotten gold as my metallics but if you're interested in watching how quick and simple it is to change photo frames any type of framing around your home um, then watch on because that's what this video is all about okay so here we go I'm painting inside my home I've just laid out some paper um, on the table and I'm getting ready to go so I'm going to be using premium chalk paint for this project because this is not a wooden surface it's um, I don't know what it is but it's shiny it's kind of very manufactured um, premium chalk paints I'm using premium chalk paint because I want to do a paint effect if you're looking at doing a one color finish keeping it super smooth modern and contemporary then you'll want to use the Velvet Lux over the chalk paint. Chalk paint is great for paint effects, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm using, I want it to look quite earthy, so I'm starting off with tar as my base, giving my tar premium chalk paint a really, really good stir. And I'm going to talk you through it as I go. I've taken um, the glass and the backing off. Today I'm going to use a Series 2020 style um, Mister brush. If you've got a smaller frame with lots of detailing, you might want to use the pointed tip brush. Um, so have a look at your frame and, and find the right brush that's appropriate um, for the size and the proportion. The size 18 um, style Mister brush is quite versatile, great for this. So if, you, if I run my um, bristles along there, you can see it's the perfect size. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to load up for this finish so you can see I've got plenty of paint on my brush and I'm just going to spread it out nice and be generous with my paint and what I'm looking for is I'm looking to create some lines on my paint um, work I want those linear lines because I want it to kind of look quite earthy and I'm going to do um, a wax over this to kind of give it um, depth and to bring out the texture so no sanding no priming there's no smell with the paint so it's a great paint to use on a cold and wet windy day like it is today and um, get something done it's all water based low on VOCs just really nice really nice to, to use um, and then I'm just going to run my brush just gently along the insides and then go around the edges because it's likely that when you paint the top there might be some ed um, drips dripping down the sides so paint your top and then pick up all the drips on the side 
and make sure that they are all, there's no big drips or anything like that on the sides of your frame. Um, if you've got the right size brush, you probably won't get drips. And then I'm just gonna do this side here, which is facing you. I can't really see, so I'm looking into the camera. Perfect. So that is my first coat. Ta-da. So, really great coverage. Tar Premium Chalk Paint. And you can still see a little bit of the black come through, that's fine. I'm gonna do two coats on this. So, at that point, you're gonna leave it to dry. Or, if you're a little bit impatient, and for this particular finish, for this particular finish, you can also hair dry it, but you just want to move the hair dryer around. And I've got six of these to do, so I'm gonna use the hair dryer because I want it to be an instant thing. You're ready to go with your second coat of Tar Premium Chalk Paint. So I've got some more paint on my brush and I'm just going to run over it again. And this is where I'm going to get my full coverage. The paint will move kind of exact and stay put exactly where you put it. Um, it's got a lot of, you can see, it's a very creamy paint. There's a lot of body to it. So if I press quite firmly with my brush, I'm going to get some brush strokes and I actually want that. So I want some one way brush strokes. So on my second coat, I'm gonna brush quite firmly. To get those lines. coverage and everything like that, then you're going to go ahead and dry it. Okay, so that's all dry. Now I'm going to just run some paint along the sides. Just because when the paint's wet on one side, it's quite hard to grab without leaving fingerprints. That's all good. This side, which was for... Is my tar premium chalk paint on my black frame two coats and it's beautifully covered it's got some lines in there but as it dries it dries matte so it, you can't see it but I'm going to bring it up with some waxing but tar is such a nice neutral I love this neutral it's so beautiful um, it's very very versatile and like I said if you wanted to do a frame like this you can hear my dog in the background um, if you wanted to do a frame like this in one colour, you can do Velvet Lux. So with Velvet Lux Hybrid Chalk Paint, you do two coats, you don't have to wax it, it self levels even further after you've painted it to give you a nice smooth flat finish. So two coats and you're done. But in this case we're using Premium Chalk Paint because we want to do a paint effect. So now we're on to step two. So now we're getting ready to wax the Premium Chalk Paint. Now Premium Chalk Paint will adhere to pretty much any surface that you put it on, um, but it is a very, very porous paint, so it will kind of absorb things. So if I had really oily hands right now, I touch this frame, it will absorb the oil. So Premium Chalk Paint really does need to be sealed, either with wax or lacquer. When you're sealing with wax, you have the option to seal with a coloured wax, which gives it a decorative paint effect as well. Um, so we are going to do a carbon black wax. So here I've got, whoops, um, my clear wax, the Artisan clear wax. Now this is really unique to um, the Artisan premium chalk paint system in terms of coloured waxes. The reason being is that the waxes are so soft and silky, they dry off super quick. They work really well in conjunction with the premium chalk paints because they're loaded 
with pigments so you can combine the two to create a coloured wax. We have 67 colours in the Artisan Company Premium Chalk Paint range which means that you can do up to 67 coloured waxes, different combinations, um, different pairings will give you different paint effects. So it really is endless in terms of what you can do. So I'm going to just scoop out, and I'll do it on this paper so you can see, just a little bit of clear wax on there. And then I'm gonna scoop out a little bit of carbon black. I'm down to the bottom of my can so um, and then I'm just going to mix the two together I mixed it on this brown paper and it's because I'm at home and I'm far away from the kitchen and I'm being a little bit lazy but you really want to mix it on some baking paper or something like that not on brown paper because it's absorbing you can see it's absorbed the brown paper is porous so it's absorbing the wax through um, but ideally on some baking paper so I've mixed it all thoroughly I've made sure there's no paint in there it's like making icings need your style mister 3600 um, pure bristle brush some clean limb free rags and all you're gonna do is you're gonna pick up your colored wax in this case your carbon black wax and you're just gonna brush it out a nice thin coat. See how beautifully that wax glides? It goes so far as well. I'm just gonna get this edge, make sure I don't miss the edges. The pure bristle brush really helps with just kind of gliding that wax out. I highly recommend getting, if you're doing premium chalk paint and doing waxes or wax work, to get the brush because it does make a huge difference. Okay, so that's on. And then I've got my clean and free rag. The carbon black is absorbing into the tar premium chalk paint. And what I'm doing here is I'm just wiping the excess off. So it can only absorb so much wax. There'll be a layer on here that's still kind of thick and moving around. And basically that's what I'm gonna do. But because I've spread it out so thin, you know, my wiping, there's just a little bit of excess. If I was gonna load this up with heaps and heaps of wax, um, then it becomes really messy because you're wiping off so much wax, you're wasting it and so forth. Don't be afraid of just putting the wax on because I'll show you how to remove it in a moment if you need to. So that's finished so far. Then I'm going to go along here and do the same thing. to remove your carbon black wax your clear wax works like an eraser so I'm just gonna put a little bit of clear wax on my rag and I'm just gonna brush it along here so you can see it's removed it so knowing that you should be able to wax with a lot of confidence now what I'm gonna do with this is if you really like this look, then you're pretty much done. You'll move on to the metallic glides. But I actually want the tar premium chalk paint to come through a little bit more. Um, and I just want the black to just kind of be in between the texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put some clear wax on my brush. And I've just taken some out, put a little bit on, just tap it out, that's probably a bit too much. And all I'm gonna do is I'm going to run my brush just very gently over the surface and just remove some of that carbon black wax. And I call this part highlighting because I'll show you in a moment. 
you're allowing it to kind of just sit um, in between the texture rather than coating the surface like that. So really kind of, I'm letting it sit in the bevel. There's definitely carbon black in between those lines that I purposely created with my brush. Um, so that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go around and do that to all my base finish so <clears throat> there you go there's my tar premium chalk paint with carbon black wax so I'll just bring it a little bit closer and I've got six of these to do so what I will do is I will go through and do them all and then you just want to let that wax um, just settle a little bit before you do the metallic glides. So just make sure nothing's moving around. Um, it does dry, go touch dry super quick. So as soon as long as it's not a humid day or anything like that, um, as soon as it's exposed to the air, the wax will start hardening off. So it's all ready to be bedazzled. Um, so I'm going to add some metallics to it now. So I've got a very well used Artisan Metallic Glide here. Um, there is a metallic glide video online for those who want to see the full rundown of how these little power houses work. But so easy to do. You can put some gloves on and then if you want to pick up your metallic glide, it comes like that. You just kind of like pick it up with your fingers, flatten it off, and then touch any areas that you want to add a bit of metallics to. So I'm going to touch these and I'm going to do two metallic glides. I'm going to do forgotten gold. I don't know if you can see that from where you are. And I don't want it to be perfect either, so. I want it to be slightly varied because I can run my bronzer night back over in some areas. is that now over here I don't know if you can see if I kind of go like that see how I've got gold on top of that and I didn't mean to so I'm gonna put a little bit of clear wax on my rag and just kind of soak it in and all I'm gonna do Is I'm going to very gently run my clear wax over that and remove it. And it's going to remove some of the carbon black wax and then I'll just put some carbon black wax back over that and just fade it out and then go back over just here. So clear wax will remove the metallic glide. So if you run, if you make any mistakes, putting a little bit of clear wax over the metallic glide will help you to remove it. So now that I've got that in there, I'm now going to go through and grab my bronzonite metallic glide. Bronzonite is more like a bronzy tone, and I'm just going to go through and just here and there run that over the gold. 
Just give it a little bit of a two-tone kind of look. And I'm hoping that by doing that, it will kind of tie in with some of the decor that I have on the sideboard. Um, and the cushion that I've got off to the side, because there's some coppery cues in that. So there's my frame. So that's it. It's so easy. Um, you're going to do two coats of tar premium chalk paint, flat wax, and then run your fingers along and put some metallic glides on the edges. And that warehouse frame becomes something completely bespoke. So I'm going to go through and do all six, and then I'll show you what it looks like on the wall. So here are the frames, they're all hung up, um, looking much, much softer than the black, which was very, very um, strong in contrast. These are still contrasting, but they're a much softer version. So I'm really loving the Artisan Tar um, with the metallics on this frame with the carbon black wax. Um, it ties in really nicely with the sideboard, gives it a nice contrast and kind of stands out from the wall, but it's still quite soft and elegant um, and really lovely depth to it. So it's not all smooth and flat, it's got some texture to it um, and it's got some depth to it. So super easy project to do, great. Um, if you've got a spare hour or so and you're looking to update your frames or customise them, make them a little bit special. Um, so I hope the video has inspired you to kind of have a look around your home um, at some of your frames that you may have lying around, um, old or new, um, and find a way to kind of make them bespoke and beautiful in the artisan, in an artisan paint finish. I'll catch you guys soon. Take care. Bye.